We really view sexuality as part of our transformation. Even though it's like Western culture, you think that, oh, we're a little bit more open about sexuality and sensuality and that, but we're really not. Every human being has in common is that we all have this sexual essence to us. We all came into life through that energy force and through that chakra. We really view sexuality as part of our transformation. Like I've done Mm -hmm. a lot of transformational work. Like you name it, I've done it. I've read all the books. I've done all the courses. Um, You really have. Yeah, I really have. (laughs) And there was still a missing piece for me. And it really was the transformation of my sexuality and really honoring that voice, which we call like honoring your pussy for us. You know, I'm I'm a cis female. And so- um, And so like listening to that, when I really started to listen to what my pussy was saying to me, Mm -hmm. that's when my transformation really started to like generate at a level I had never experienced before. And that's actually a big part of when we do our live workshop at Liberate, what we're going to be uh, exploring and teaching that evening. (laughs) Uh, No, I, yeah, I mean, but it makes sense. I mean, mind, body, and soul. And then how many people have... You know, I mean, I just find more and more individuals as I do therapy work and things like that, that there's so much sexual trauma, so much shame, mm-hmm. so much, you know, like also cultural society, like feeling like you have to be this way or this way, but I might have other tendencies mm-hmm. or other, other stuff. And, and that suppression and that guilt and that, you know, whatever really keeps people from being their true authentic self. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that every human being has in common common is that we all have this sexual essence to us. We all came into life through that energy force and through that chakra. So we actually rose during the era of the Me Too movements was mm-hmm. also the timing. So when you talked about, you know, this, the, 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 the spiritual synapses going off here and everything was just like effortless, it was, and it was being called forth for us to bring into the world during a time where, Hashtag me too. Hashtag time's up was yeah. just yeah. on the rise for that second, second rise here about five years ago. Yeah. We were and like halfway through season one when me too happened. We were like, yeah. what? We were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we are on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right track at the right time, yeah. you know, and our sexual education for the most part has is so limited, you know, and that is something that's been a huge inspiration for us is like, well, we don't talk about sex and we Mm -hmm. then create our educational system based off of not talking about sex. Then all we were left to learn was don't do it. Don't get pregnant. Don't get an STD. We weren't taught how, where our clitoris is or how to touch ourselves or, you know, and so we're really on the cutting edge of the new conversation for sex education and talking about it is certainly the first place to start normalizing pleasure education. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, and I was reading somewhere, um, maybe on your website or something that somebody, one of you didn't, didn't even start masturbating until quit talk. Right. So one in five women in America have never masturbated is a real really? statistic. And I was a 32 year old woman who didn't even know that women masturbated. No one ever talked to me about it. I was reading this book and I was like, it was a revelation to me. And at the time I had been laid up in bed for about eight months with a back injury. Mm-hmm. And I had a slew of other injuries on the left side of my body, which is, you know, I learned is your feminine side. And, mm-hmm. and I was really, you know, a uh, career driven, really forcing through, um, with my masculine energy generally, mm-hmm. not that I knew that I was doing that, but it really, it really led to me not honoring my body and had all these injuries to where I was starting a podcast called clit talk while I was laid up in bed and started masturbating. And then my back pain started to heal. Yeah, because all that better. Yeah, that make, I mean, it makes perfect sense from my point of view. We're but, actually taught not to talk yeah. about sex, but no one ever probably told you don't talk about sex, right? It's just just in, wasn't in done. the air. It just <laughs> wasn't done, yeah. and it um it really leads to a lot of suppression, and it really leads to a lot of sexual trauma, which is why Madison said it earlier something is really universal. We've found in our teaching, so. And then, um, and then that turn, and then that transmutes into sh- like in our journey. In when we started to have these conversations, like really, what came up for all of us was shame. Yeah, 
Like there's a real, there's, there's a real trans like a real transformation around shame. And, you know, I was brought up in a household where I actually did talk about sex. My family, my mom was a registered nurse. We were open about it. I had a healthy upbringing and still, you know, Mm. the patriarchal world culture, I still had shame that like, I didn't even know was there. If you like this content, make sure that you like subscribe and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time. Have a beautiful, blessed day.